What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about medals in Pokemon Go. Before we get into it, you might be like, why should I even care about medals? Well, first of all, having a bunch of platinum medals, which are the highest level of medals you can have, is kind of a flex in Pokemon Go, but more importantly, to get from level 48 to 49 in Pokemon Go, you need to have 35 platinum medals. Even if you're just level one right now, you have to start thinking about platinum medals because trust me, when the time comes, you cannot grind out 35 platinum medals in three days. It's a long process, so today we're gonna talk about how to get platinum medals. The easiest ones to get, let's hop right into it. Timestamps below as always. First medals I want to talk about are going to be the tight medals, which are the medals down here. Pretty much it requires you to catch 2,500 of a certain type of Pokemon to get each of these medals platinum. Of course, depending on the medal will be all different types. I want to note also when you do slowly level up this medal from bronze for 10, silver for 50, gold for 200, platinum for 2,500. That's a big jump. You do get a catch bonus at the bottom, meaning it's easier to catch this type of Pokemon. So if you want to make it easier on yourself to catch steel type Pokemon, go ahead and platinum this medal. The easiest way I find to complete these medals is to focus on them during special events when a certain Pokemon is boosted spawns. A great example is community day when a community day for a grass type Pokemon pops up and you haven't completed your gardener medal. It's a great time to go ahead, go out and catch as many Pokemon during that community day because grass Pokemon are going to be the only type of Pokemon spawning. Another example is right now as I'm making this video is ultra unlock part one and we have plenty of rock type Pokemon spawning in the wild. So it's a great time for us to go out and complete our hiker medal if we have not completed them. All these type medals do take time to complete, but just remember if there's one that you haven't completed and a certain Pokemon is spawning in the wild, go ahead and complete it. You can also go ahead and trade for these medals. So if you do receive a Pokemon that is a certain type in trade, it does add one point to the medal. So you can technically just receive 2,500 poison type Pokemon instead of catching them and complete this medal. Of course, that's not practical, but it's just something to note. If you do need a couple extra poison types and there are none spawning in the wild, just get them from trade. Now let's talk about some specific Pokemon medals. First of all, we have the Pikachu fan medal, catch a thousand Pikachus. This one is pretty easy as well. All you want to do is go ahead and catch every Pikachu you see. And also if your friends catch Pikachus, you guys can go ahead and trade those Pikachus with each other. And it does add even one more to the medals. Not only can you catch Pikachus to get this badge up, but you can also receive them through trade. Also, we have the big Magikarp medal called the Fisher medal, catch a thousand big Magikarps and the tiny Rattata medal, which requires you to catch a thousand tiny Rattatas to complete it. A big Magikarp counts as a Magikarp that weighs more than 13 kilograms. You can find that out by coming into your Magikarp and pretty much looking at the weight here. For example, on the left, 14.18. So this counts as an XL Magikarp. You need to catch a thousand of these Magikarps to complete the medal. Of course, there's no way of knowing when you're looking at them in the catch screen, but that's how you complete the medal. And then for the tiny Rattata medal, the youngster medal, the Rattata needs to weigh less than 2.4 kilograms. Note, Alolan Rattatas do count towards this medal. The easiest way I find to complete this medal, of course, catch as many Rattatas and Magikarps in the wild as you can and hope that your luck is on your side. But I find trading is a great way to do this. Save all of your XL Magikarps and small Rattatas and go ahead and find someone who's been doing the same in your local area and you guys can go ahead and trade for these medals. Of course, this might not always work if there's no one in your area, but that is the best way to receive them from trade and catch as many Magikarps and Rattatas as you can. And the same thing for the Pikachu medal, just catch as many and you'll slowly get that medal up. That one is quite a grind. Let's quickly talk about the Ace Trainer medal. This requires you to train a thousand times. If you're confused what training is, you come into battle, scroll to the bottom, and training is at the bottom. Battling Blanche, Sandella, or Spark in either of the leagues counts as a train. The best way I find to do this medal is come into Sandella, click train, click the Great League, and you're going to power up a Sharpedo or a Shadow Sharpedo. Shadow Sharpedo is preferred to 1500 CP or just under and use it against Sandella. Shadow Sharpedo or Sharpedo can completely sweep Sandella's team without having to use a charge move. Let me show you real quick. You want to make sure you have Waterfall on your Sharpedo, by the way. So here you go. All I'm going to do is tap. You see how much damage that's doing. I never even have to use a charge move at all to beat this. And we're just going to tap all the way. Through. And there you go. That was about, I think, 20 seconds to beat Sandello with a Sharpedo. Shadow Sharpedo is preferred, but Sharpedo does work as well. And there you go. We are going to get 300 Stardust and also one more towards the medal. This medal is quite a grind as it requires you to do that 2000 times to complete it to platinum. So it's not the most recommended medal to get, but that is how you do it. If you do want to go ahead and grind out your Ace Trainer medal. Quickly want to touch on the referral medal. If you don't know, referring is a new thing in Pokemon Go in which if you refer a trainer who hasn't played for 90 days or is completely new to the game, 
game, you will not only get one referral towards your referral medal, but also you'll get some items and stuff like that. I have a full video explaining referrals, which I will link below. Honestly, this is kind of a hard medal to get. Your best bet is to ask your friends who haven't played in a while, if you have 50 friends, to come, just join, refer you, and then, you know, complete the medal very simply, or recommend people in your area to start playing and get their referral code. That's really the only way to get the referral medal. It surprisingly seems like it's pretty easy, like 50 trainers is not a lot of people to refer, but if you live in an area where no one plays or anything like that, this might be a tough medal to get, but that's how I find the easiest way to get the referral medal. If you know any better ways to help get this referral medal, please comment them below. Now let's talk about the Ultra League Veteran Medal, the Master League Veteran Medal, and the Great League Veteran Medal. Pretty much this requires you to win a thousand battles in either the Great League, the Ultra League, or the Master League. Many people will be like, this is super hard, you have to go in the Go Battle League, but the actually great thing about this is you don't actually have to battle in the Go Battle League to complete all three of these medals. What you can do is pretty much come into your friends list here, go ahead and click on any trainer, click the battle, and then go ahead and click Great League. Pretty much message this trainer in real life and say, hey, can we grind this medal out? You're gonna use strong Pokemon. They're gonna use 10 CP Pokemon. You can go ahead, instantly win the battle against them and then just keep doing that a thousand times. A thousand times does take a long time, but it's a very easy medal to get because you can pretty much instant win. Just make sure that the account you're going against is using 10 CP Pokemon. And then in return, you can do the same thing for them if they wanna go ahead and grind their medal out. But Great League, Ultra League, and Master League veteran medals are pretty easy to get. Of course, you can do it legit in the Go Battle League if you'd like, but that is a way to grind out that medal. I quickly want to touch on the Pokedex medals. First of all, we have the Kanto medal, we have the Johto medal, we have all the region medals, uh, the Hoenn, the Unova medal, I think this is the Sinnoh medal. Pretty much these require you to complete your Pokedex. The only Pokedexes that are available to complete currently are going to be the first two gens, so they're going to be Johto and it's going to be Kanto. Really for these medals, just try to ask people in your area if they do have regionals to help complete the medal. Luckily, someone in my area actually had a Corsola that they could trade me to help me complete my Johto medal and now all I need for that medal is going to be Heracross which will be spawning shortly in raids during an event. Don't fret too much over those Pokédex medals because the only ones you can currently complete are the Johto and the Kanto medals so try to complete those if you can through getting regional trades from friends but if not it's no big deal. Now let's talk about raiding medals. So there's a couple medals here. First of all the Battle Legend win 2000 legendary raids. This one just is a grind. You just have to battle in a raid as often as possible if you can. Use a free pass every single day. We also have the champion medal. This one is win 2000 raids, but these are non-legendary raids. So these are just regular raids, whether that be one star or three star raids. This one's a little tougher to do as most people prefer to do legendary raids, but doing a one star once in a while can help you towards this raids. These ones are just medals that will slowly go up as you play the game, which I'll talk about at the end. But let's talk about the rising star medal, which is one I think is pretty easy for people to do. Defeat 150 species of Pokemon in raid. This pretty much means you have to defeat 150 different species of Pokemon. So like that's like beating a Mewtwo will get you one towards this, but then also beating a Carvana in a raid will get you one towards this. But you can't keep battling Mewtwo, it won't keep adding to this. So what I recommend for this medal is whenever there's a new batch of ones and three star raids in the raid pool, go ahead and battle each of them once using a free pass, just so you can go ahead and get one towards this. It only is 150 different species of Pokemon, which is not that hard actually to do and complete this medal to platinum. So anytime there's a new raid pool, and if there's a Pokemon you've never battled in a raid before, go ahead, battle it, and then you'll just get one towards Rising Star. And then once you're done, you can go ahead and stop battling the new raid bosses that you only want to battle for this medal. Also the new raid expert, which is uh, make the raid battle trainer achievement screen 500 times. This one is just kind of a grind again. If you want to complete this medal, just go ahead and do as many uh, raids as you can. I find it easier if you're in a smaller lobby. So if you're doing like ones and three stars with like only three of your friends, it's a lot easier to get onto the raid trainer achievement screen. So if you are trying to grind this medal, don't raid with as many people and bigger groups because it'll be a lot harder to get onto the raid achievement screen. But this one just takes time. Grind it out, guys. Also, the raiding star duo medal, win 2,000 raids with a friend. This can be a legendary raid or a um, any type of raid, I believe. Pretty much, you have to find a friend in Pokemon Go, one of your friends on your friends list, and go ahead and win 2,000 raids with them in that raid battle. Of course, it's always easiest if you have a person you normally play Pokemon Go with. This is the best. If you play Pokemon Solo, this is going to be a hard medal to complete. But, you know, I always play with my mom, so I complete this medal really quickly because pretty much every single raid I do, my mom is in that raid. So if you do have a friend that you play Pokemon Go with, make sure they're always in your raids. You guys are always playing together to complete this medal. Now let's talk about gym medals. Now gym medals are one of my weaknesses. I really never gym. The gym leader medal, which is defend a gym for 15,000 hours. This one, what I recommend, the easiest way to get this up is put your Pokemon in gyms as often as possible. If you can go ahead and take every single gym in your area or, you know, go out one day and try to win over as many gyms as possible, it'll definitely help. The more Pokemon you have in gyms, the faster this medal will go up. If you technically have like 100 Pokemon in gyms, 
items, which I doubt is possible. And you know, you stay in there for an hour each. That'll be a hundred hours for this medal. So it's honestly, the best way to get this medal up is to go wherever there are gyms and win over the gyms. We also have the Berry Master Medal. Feed 15,000 berries at gyms. This one also just takes time. The easiest way to get this one up is just every time you have a Pokemon in a gym or you see a gym of your color, just throw in a couple berries. Slowly over time, it will get up. I need to go ahead and do this. But if you do have time, go ahead, throw some berries into some gyms, um, feed the Pokemon in the gym some berries. You'll get some free Stardust, which is great as well. And you'll get up your Berry Master. Medal. Finally, we have the Battle Girl Medal. Win 4,000 gym battles. Honestly, I have barely ever do gym battling and I don't like gym battling, but this one technically you could get done pretty easy. Go around the city battling any single gyms. And this one, as you're getting the gym defending hours one, this one will go up as well because you will have to knock people out of gyms. So those ones are just, you know, it's just grinding metal. If you want to go out one day, grind some gyms, you can go ahead and take a big chunk out of those metals. Let's talk about the picnicker metal. So this is one of the easiest metals to get if you do it during the right time. It requires you to use a lower module to help any trainer catch 2,500 Pokemon. What this means is when you put a lure module down, if a Pokemon spawns up that lure module and another trainer on another account catches it, you'll get one towards this medal. Now, the easiest way to get this medal done is to go ahead and do this during events when, first of all, there's a lot of people playing, and second of all, when there's a bonus to the lure modules. I did mine during GoFest. GoFest, we had three hour lure modules. So I went downtown in Ottawa. I placed a couple lure modules, maybe like 10 to 15, in a very busy area. You have to be very early there, and you have to be there first because you want to make sure you get your lures down before other people. But once they're down in those busy areas, so many trainers are coming through that they're just catching Pokemon off that lure and you can get this medal done in one day. I was at 1,500 when GoFest started and now I'm at 3,600. So I went up 2,000 on this medal in just about three hours during GoFest since my lures did last three hours. So go ahead during special events, community days, GoFest or events when lures are boosted to complete this medal super easy. Now the cameraman medal um, have 4,000 surprise encounters in Go Snapshot. Pretty much this means that you have to encounter either a community day Pokemon when we're getting the special snapshots or an event snapshot or a smear goal every single day. You can actually encounter one smear goal every single day through snapshots. So I definitely recommend making sure you encounter that smear goal, not just to catch smear goal, but go ahead and complete this medal. It takes 400 surprise snapshots. So technically you could get this done in a year and a bit if you go ahead and make sure you get that smear goal encounter every single day. This one's definitely one that's tough to grind. So go ahead and make sure you're getting all your snapshot encounters during community days, during GoFest or whatever event has special snapshots. This is the time to go ahead and make sure you're getting them. Talk about trading medals real quick. First of all, we have the gentleman trade 2,500 Pokemon. This medal is actually surprisingly easy to get. You can do 100 trades a day. So really all you have to do is trade for 25 days to complete this medal. You might think that's a lot, but you know, getting a platinum medal grinded out in one month from just going ahead and taking like 30 minutes a day to complete your 100 trades. Pretty easy medal to get. Just go ahead, find a friend, say, hey, can we just do 100 random trades for the next 25 days and complete this medal? Pretty easy medal to get. We also have the pilot medal, which is one that's tougher to get. Now the pilot medal requires you to earn 10 million kilometers across the distance of all Pokemon in trade. Do you see that distance between the two Pokemon when you are trading? It shows you how far away these Pokemon were caught. You need to trade 10 million kilometers worth of that. Now, the best way to do this is to take advantage of global invites. So invites to raids that you get uh, globally. Those Pokemon will be caught super far away. So it'll be easy to get this. And then also take advantage of seven kilometer eggs. Any Pokemon you hatch from a seven kilometer egg. And if you receive that seven kilometer egg from a gift that's super far, it will add a lot of distance to the pilot metal. But really the key here is to make sure you're saving all of your distance Pokemon, not only trading them to get a guaranteed XL candy, because if you do trade a Pokemon that was caught 100 kilometers away, it's a guaranteed XL candy if you're above level 40, but also to work towards the pilot metal. So save all your distance Pokemon. Quickly touching on the Mega Evolution medals. First of all, we have Mega Ev Evolution Guru, Mega Evolve, 46 different species of Mega Pokemon. We don't even have 46 Mega Pokemon in the game, so this one cannot be completed yet, but the successor requires you to Mega Evolve Pokemon a thousand times. Now, this is actually a very tough metal to complete. I've done the math here, and if we're taking a Pokemon like uh, Beedrill, for example, which if you've Mega Evolved a Beedrill before, it's only gonna be 20 Mega Energy per Mega Evolve. If we wanna Mega Evolve a Beedrill a thousand times, how much Mega Energy is that? That's gonna be uh, 20, thousand mega energy from a drill, which um, you can only hold up to 2000 mega energy each time. So that's 10 times the amount of the max mega energy you can hold at once. For example, here you can see mega drill energy. I have 2000. I can't hold any more than that. So I have to go ahead, use all this mega energy, a mega evolving a drill, collect that back up and then do that again 10 times. So honestly, I don't really find the successor metal that worth to grind. It takes so much mega energy and resources to complete, but you can go ahead and slowly grind this one out if you'd like. A thousand times is a lot of times to mega evolve a 
Pokemon, and that's a lot of Mega Energy as well. Let's talk about the Team Rocket medal. So you have to defeat 2,000 Team Rocket members, whether that be grunts or leaders. Go ahead and grind this medal out. If you want, you can go ahead, take a month, and just make sure every grunt you see, go ahead and battle them. You could probably knock this badge out in a month, I think, if you really grind it out. But this is one of the ones where, you know, you just got to go ahead and, and, and every time you get a balloon above you, make sure you battle it as slowly add up. Once you complete those 2,000 Team Rocket members, you don't ever have to battle a rocket again if you don't want. Also, on the topic of Team Rocket, we have the Purifier medal. A Purify a thousand Shadow Pokemon. This is probably the most expensive medal to get. Purifying a thousand Shadow Pokemon takes a lot, a lot of Stardust. The key to this medal and making sure it's cheap is to keep Zubats, Magikarps, Weedles, Poochianas, and there's a couple other ones. I'll leave them on screen right now. Those Pokemon only cost a thousand Stardust to go ahead and purify. So make sure you save them when trying to complete this Purifier medal. If you're only Purify Pokemon that cost a thousand Stardust, that will still be a million dollars worth of Stardust to go ahead and complete this medal. So this is not one I really recommend grinding, but you can go ahead and do it if you keep the Pokemon I did mention. We also got the Sightseer medal. So this one requires you to visit 2000 unique Pokestops. A unique Pokestop is a Pokestop that has a halo around it. It means you've never spun that Pokestop ever, or it's been two years since you spun that Pokestop. Now, the easiest way to complete this medal is to go ahead on a trip. Of course, it's not possible right now, but if I were to go to Montreal or Toronto, for example, every Pokestop I spin there would be a unique new Pokestop. So I could just go there, spin uh, 600 Pokestops for the day and platinum this medal. The best way to do this is, of course, to travel and go to places you've never been, especially cities you've never been, as there's going to be a billion new Pokestops you've never spun. But if you can't do that, then you're going to have to wait to complete the Sightseer medal. Just make sure you spin any Pokestop that does have a halo around it. The best friend medal here, the Idol medal, become best friends with 20 trainers, requires you to grind out best friends with trainers. Now, this one just takes time. Make sure that you're interacting with 20 trainers on your friends list every single day. Honestly, I don't think this medal is that hard to complete. You could easily complete this medal in, um, I think it takes 90 days to get to best friends with a certain trainer. So if you just have 20 friends going 90 days, make sure you interact with them every single day. You could easily complete this medal. This is one of the easier medals to complete here. But one of the harder medals to get is the best buddy medal. Have 200 best buddies. Now that's a lot of best buddies. It might not seem like a lot. 200 best buddies does take some time. So what I'm going to do is link some resources below to the background buddies videos, which show you guys how to level up background buddies. So you can technically level up 20 buddies at a time and go ahead and get 20 best buddies at a time. 20 best buddies every like three months or so it does take a lot of time of course to get to 200 but using the background buddies technique that I do outline in that video will help you speed up your process instead of just doing one best buddy at a time you can go ahead and do multiple with that video we're coming down to the end of the medals first of all the unknown medal catch 28 unknowns this requires you to catch 28 of the different letters of unknowns I'm not sure if we even have 28 different letters of unknown in the game yet someone could let me know in below but pretty much every time there's a new unknown letter in your area if someone calls out an unknown spawn or if there's an event spawning unknown, go ahead and make sure you catch it, at least one of them, so you can go ahead and get this badge up. This one takes time. I don't even know if you can complete this one yet. Another tough one is the triathlete medal. It pretty much requires you to get 107 day Pokestop or catch streaks in Pokemon Go. This medal will technically take you around a year to complete. The easiest way to complete this medal, of course, is to go ahead and just make sure you're getting your catch streak and your spin streak every single day. Of course, if you do your catch streak and your spin streak, that counts as two towards this medal. If you only do your catch streak, it only counts as one. So you can do this a lot faster if you're making sure you're not only spinning a stop every day, but also catching a Pokemon every day. Just make sure every single day you log into the game to get this medal completed. That's the easiest way to do it. Now we got the Wayfair medal here. Earn 15,000 Wayfair agreements. Some of you might not see this medal in your medal bag because the reason is you haven't connected your account to Wayfair yet. If you don't know what Wayfair is, it pretty much allows you to go ahead and review other people's Pokestop nominations and get these things called upgrades in which you can make your Pokestop nominations go through faster. I have a full video explaining how to get this Wayfair badge up to 1,500. It's a really easy badge to get if you do need an extra platinum medal you can grind this one out easily in a month i would say so check the link below to the wayfarer video how to become a reviewer and how to get this medal up last medal i want to talk about that i think is easy enough to get is going to be the evolution medal evolve 2000 pokemon easiest way to get this medal is use this search shred right here it'll show you all your pokemon inventory that only cost 12 candy to evolve these are the cheapest pokemon to evolve go ahead and evolve any of them anytime you have them 2000 evolves is honestly not even that many evolves i just completed it which is surprising but i don't evolve that many Pokemon. Just go ahead and evolve Pokemon when you do have the candy and it's not a rare Pokemon that you plan on powering up and you need the candy for. So use the search thread below. It'll show you 
all the Pokemon that are cheap to evolve, go ahead and evolve them to get this metal. This is one of the easier metals to do. You can easily get this metal done in a month if you'd like. Finally, let's go over the Collector Metal, catch 50,000 Pokemon. The Breeder Metal, hatch 2,500 eggs. The Pokestop Ranger Metal, complete 2,500 field research tasks. The Jogger Metal, walk 10,000 kilometers. The Backpacker Metal, visit 50,000 Pokestops. All of those metals, I just called grind metals. They're pretty much to complete those metals. You have to play Pokemon Go, hatch eggs, walk around, catch Pokemon, spin Pokestops, just play. Those metals will slowly go up. The more you play, the faster these metals will go up. So just make sure you're completing field research tasks. Always have an egg and incubator to go ahead and hatch. These ones are grind metals. So just go ahead, grind them out slowly and you will complete those metals. Some of them I haven't even completed as you have seen because I haven't played enough. So I'm gonna go out there and keep grinding. With that being said, guys, I hope I was able to outline some of the easiest metals to go ahead and complete and wake you guys up to let you know that it's time to go ahead and grind out some of these metals. So you have the 35 platinum metals to get some level 48 to 49. Just trust me, once you get there, it's gonna be hard to go ahead and get those 35 platinum metals. With that being said, guys, I would love for you guys to comment below what metal you're currently focusing on right now in Pokemon Go. Me, myself, I wanna go ahead and make sure I complete my battle legend medal. I'm so close to winning 2000 legendary raids. I'm gonna be doing it super soon. 33 more to go, guys. Thank you guys for watching. We're gonna see you in the next video. Follow for more tips, baby. Peace.